So welcome back aliens, this is Navin Reddy from the Risical Learnings and today we will talk about relational databases okay which is RDBMS. So there are different DBMS available right in fact different tools are available. So I am getting lots of questions on Facebook and YouTube which DBMS to work with you know we have different DBMS available right. So especially if you are a college student or if you, if you are working on a software we get confused which one to choose. In fact when I was in college when I was making my first project I was confused which, which DBMS to work with right. So uh, this video will help you I mean it will try to help you to select which DBMS to work with since this is Jan and normally you have to submit your project by April or May. So you might be thinking about DBMS so let's start with it. So there are different DBMS available right so as you can see in the list here we have all this DBMS available so we have MySQL, we have Postgres, we have SQL Server, we have Oracle and, and the list goes on we also have DB2. Then question arises out of this list which one to choose okay. Now there are multiple parameters to choose which DBMS you want to work with okay. So before starting with those parameters let us talk about some of the DBMS which, which are available or which are famous in fact. So, uh, so now there are lots of DBMS right so if you go to Wikipedia there is a huge list of DBMS available. I have choose this, this numbers because these are quite uh, famous right. Let us start with the first one which is which is MS SQL okay. So we have MS SQL server which is from Microsoft. So if you so yeah so MS SQL server is provided by Microsoft. So normally whenever you work with .NET technologies of course the first choice we have is MS SQL server right. Uh, the next one is MS Access. So let us say if you are making a small applications of course you, you should go for MS Access. This, the next one is MySQL right which is by Oracle. So in fact uh, MySQL was created by other company then Sun Microsystem bought that company and now Oracle bought Sun. So MySQL belongs to Sun right. The next one is Oracle itself. So Oracle is one of the biggest, D, uh, biggest DBMS ever. The next one is Postgres right which is P-O-S-T-G-R-E-S. Uh, I, I mean lots of people have not heard about it uh, because it is there. So we, ha we, we do have uh, Postgres there. We also have DB2. So DB2 belongs to IBM. So if you are if you are working on mainframe servers, if you are working with IBM servers, you need to use DB2 in that. Okay. So, uh, so, so these are the DBMS available, right? Let's go for which one to choose. Let's talk about the first parameter. The first parameter which we are talking about here is let's say you want to build a simple web application, a small web application. Okay. Now when you say small, what it means? Let us say you want to build your own e-commerce website not the biggest e-commerce website the small e-commerce website or you want to build a app using which you can you know you can interact with people you can chat uh, you can create a social networking website. So if you are building this type of projects uh, the best thing is go for MySQL because when you say you are building a web application uh, the, default, the de facto standard or the language you will be using is PHP right. I lot, there are lots of developers they I mean there are lots of people especially students they follow uh, PHP or they use PHP is it to learn is it to implement is it to host right. So if you are working with PHP of course you will be using MySQL reason PHP works on some servers like we have XAMPP server and in XAMPP server there is MySQL inbuilt which is your so it is XAM that M is MySQL right. So if you are using PHP of course, of course you will be going, going for MySQL. In fact if you are working with Java you will be going with MySQL because both these technologies belong to same company which is Oracle right. In fact I use MySQL in all my projects okay that is the first thing. Next thing let us say if you are building a .NET application some Microsoft based application you have two choice now in fact you have three choice either you can go with MS SQL server you can go with MS Access you can go with Oracle. So if you want to build a small application which has limited features which you need of course you will go for MS Access. If you want more features like if you want to interact with, I mean if you want transactions and if you want uh, security you will go for MS SQL server or if you want to store huge amount of data when I say huge I am talking about zettabytes. Of course no one no, no one does that right. So let us say if you want to do if you want to make an application where you want to store zettabyte of information you will go for MS SQL server or Oracle for that matter not MS SQL server Oracle. The next one is let us say if you are making a open source project and you want open source database again you can go with MySQL you cannot go with Oracle you cannot go with SQL server because those are not open source but let us say if you want to go for open source 
one of the best tool available is postgres okay so postgres is something which using which you can it, it also supports object oriented databases which is ordbms if you want to use it so you can also use uh, postgres for that which is open source uh, the next one is db2 so I, I feel, of course if you are working with ibm databases or ibm os which is os2 you will be using db2 okay now there are some there are some features which is not there in mysql which is there in oracle example in oracle we have varchar 2 in mysql we don't have that we just have varchar uh, in oracle we use check constraint in mysql we don't have that uh, then uh, okay what else so let's say if you if you want to make a distributed dbms of course you will go with uh, 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 dbms which supports this distributed things so it is not just you know choosing a database is like hey i want this because i i like that name ms sql so i will use that not exactly that's not that's not how you choose dbms you have to check all this constraint or all these parameters to choose with if you if you say you want to work with clusters if you want to work with cloud servers you have to choose a database with with that thing okay so i hope i have classified some of this for you if you have some more queries uh, use your comment section and you can comment the things if you liked this video please click on the like button and let me know your let me know your thoughts about this video so thank you so much and do subscribe for other videos